we got a lot to talk about. We have the news that Toyota is considering building a battery electric Tacoma and Tundra, as well as a Tacoma and Tundra plug-in hybrid vehicle as well. And I got more and more, lots more details in this week's truck news recap. We have Nissan Xterra. We have Ford Lightning getting a huge cut at the factory. They're going to go down to one third of their total amount of workforce. Hey, it's Tim. Pick a truck plus as we talk. And every Friday I do truck news recaps. And this Friday we got just news galore. So if you're a truck SUV fan, sit back, relax. Let's go over this news. Let's talk what's going on. I have a couple stories at pickuptrucktalk.com, pickuptrucktalk.com, if I could talk. Um, and I have some other stuff that we'll go through on the details on this. So let's start with the top. I mean, we got we got some Kia recalls. Hyundai Santa Cruz came out this week. Hyundai Tucson came out this week. Forerunner got teased. And then we have the Tundra and Tacoma news with a bat Bev, which is a battery electric EV. And we have a PEV, which is a plug-in hybrid EV. So battery electric, only battery. Plug it in. That's the only way you got to charge it for range. A plug-in hybrid vehicle has a gas engine and a electric powertrain. They work together. You plug it in, you get some miles of EV only driving and you get some miles of gas driving. It's kind of this perfect marriage for people saying daily commuting, hey, I'll just drive electric. And when I go on road trips, I'll use the gas engine. So what do we know? We know that Jack Hollis talked with CNBC in an interview and he said, I do think there's room to grow our entire truck footprint, footprint whether it be Tundra, Tacoma or something else in addition to the lineup. Hollis told CNC at a news conference, whether that's compact or something else, I think it's important for us to continue to see what the customer is looking for. So he's saying we need to looking at expanding more of their trucks, more truck offerings, and that could be Tundra Tacoma or something else. They could do a, a, a compact truck as well. Could be battery electric, which we've heard a lot of whispers this year of a new Toyota Stout coming out later this year that could be a compact truck that could be a plug-in hybrid, could be a battery electric, could be something. Also, Toyota's Thailand president, which is really interesting, told Reuters they will produce a BEV of its small Hilux pickup for the global market. So the Hilux is kind of like the cousin to Tacoma, and they're going to put it, it actually is going into a uh, resort. They're going to test it out in a couple months. So they're working furiously to get that going. And then looking at other details, like what would this look like? What would it be? Well, it'd be simple. Right? It doesn't take much rocket science to figure out what they do with a battery electric or plug-in. People want smooth or quiet, smooth, powerful, good range for realistic price. So far, we've gotten quiet. We've gotten smooth. We've gotten powerful in some of them. Range has been a question, and price has not been realistic. But if Toyota can hit those five attributes, they could do pretty well with a truck this size. Now, it's easy to see Toyota doing this with the Tacoma as a plug-in version. The RAV4 Prime is one of the best plugins in the market. It's a great one. You just pl- you, you, it's really well range, good amount of range, a uh, good amount of uh, uh, gas performance, and I've driven it quite a bit. It's a good plug-in hybrid. Looking at uh, other vehicles I could do, uh, you're looking at the Tundra would be a little bit harder for me to see. You have a lot of size issues. It's just a bigger truck. You have a lot of weight issues. And then when you're talking about a full BEV, a battery electric version of both trucks, a little harder for me to see all of that just because we have a lot of stuff going on in the market. You know, And, and you're looking at... Uh, changing prices of raw materials. We're seeing spikes and dips in EV pricing. You're seeing a plant. They have to build, I don't believe an, an EV and an ICE vehicle can be built at the same plant down the same line. That seems a lot more complex to me. So I could see that changing as well. So I, I'm not sold on the BEV versions of these trucks just yet. I think that's more like a compact truck would make more sense as a BEV. Do a plug-in hybrid on the Tacoma. Again, not really sure on the Tundra because of the size com- sizes and and weights. You already got a heavy truck in a Tundra. You make it heavier. What's your return on investment with how big this battery got to be to get any sort of usable range out of it? So those I'm not seeing, but this is kind of interesting news. And again, tying in that Toyota Stout rumor we've been hearing later on this year, you could have a battery electric version of that, which people have been asking for that. A small, cheap, uh, compact truck. You can reach over the bed. You can just do battery electric around town, 200, 200, 300 miles. It'd just be a perfect use case vehicle. Now, speaking of other vehicles that could make um, an appearance this year or next year, Nissan said it's considering bringing back the exterior revival. And it says it's got to be authentic. Now, Nissan made a lot of news at New York International Auto Show. They were going to do 30 new vehicles, like 16 going to be battery electric vehicles. But they're talking about maybe doing exterior, bringing it back. And what they're saying, it's got to be a full battery, or not full, but it's got to be 
It's got to be very act it's very actively considered, I should say. Let me slow down. It's very actively considered. It's got to be authentic. It cannot just be a rogue with all terrain tires, but something with real truck capability. So not going to do like a Pathfinder where they made that unit body and they do a different Rock Creek edition of this. No, no. They want to do a modern Xterra with a real truck frame that has capability that can compete in the space. Jeep Wranglers, uh, Ford Bronco. Um, I'm probably going to miss one right at the top. Oh, Toyota 4Runner coming back. Something that can, can really compete in the off-road space and not just be that rogue with, with all-terrain tires. So I think that's pretty exciting for those who like to see more of a body-on-frame version, more of a capability version, not so much an SUV that's a soccer mom SUV, but something that's really, you can take it off-road. You can do stuff with it. Another story we have, and I'm going to pull this over here. We have Ford drastically cuts workforce F-150 Lightning EV plant amid much slower demand. So. Again, catching my breath. I was really excited about the Toyota Tacoma news. So I'm going to slow down a little bit. Uh, Ford initially announced reduction in January, setting lower, slower than expected demand. And now they're cutting even more. According to the Ford spokesman, Jessica Enoch, she's a great person, by the way. One third of the 2,100 workers will remain at the plant starting April 1st, 2024. What does this mean? That means two thirds are moving off. They're going to offer a third will be offered early retirement. Another third will be moved over to the Michigan Assembly plant. Now, another thing that's interesting about this is that they're going to cut from three shifts down to one shift. And they had intentions to build 1,800 plus units. And right now they're looking at 5,500 units they're going to build this year, according to the UAW local. And so we've had shipments held for quality review since early uh, February. Should be starting here in April. And they've had some changing pricing and price cuts and just a lot of good stuff going on. And so we're seeing demand has just just gone down quite a bit on Lightning. So if you're in the market for that, you may not be able to find one. Uh, U.S. Probe Stellantis 2022 Ram truck models over a K1 snap ring transmission failures. This is so interesting. So this deals with heavy duty trucks. And I just did a video last Sunday about heavy duty truck reliability. And then this comes out. I'm like, what the hell? Um, so it's evaluation of K1 snap ring in the Ram one ton and then the medium duties, 4,500, 5,500. Okay, they have received 82 complaints alleging loss of motive power due to an internal transmission failure. Now, this may not be, I mean, I'm going to scroll down for just a second. I didn't quite read this all the way through, but it says that the snap ring becomes dislodged and four gears one to four are no longer functional during a failure, potentially leaving the vehicle disabled. So this happens at speeds greater than 25 miles per hour without the ability for the vehicle to resume, resume normal operations. Now, according to the NHTSA, National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, the company's U.S. unit, FCA, has conducted some testing and said that during an event such as a warning message, during such an event, a warning message will display the operator in gear five and reverse remain available. So they're probing this. They're trying to figure out what's going on. And the probe is, is Stellantis, FCA, which is their U.S. counterpart these days, are they doing enough to make that repair happen? And it's satisfying the customer. So, whew, not my stay. So, what do you guys think? <laughs> uh, you can tell I'm pretty excited about the Toyota news. I just, I, I, I just think that you know a small compact Bev makes a lot of sense. I think they could do a plug-in hybrid version like the Rav Four Prime in the Tacoma. I think a lot of people were expecting that, and people want better fuel economy. And I'm sorry, these brands that keep talking about they're going to hybrid a truck and not get better fuel economy. Then, to me, what's the point? Why do I have the additional expense? of having a battery in there and had paying more for all this powertrain technology if I don't get any real world benefits. And I, I know people don't buy trucks for fuel economy, but you know, we've crossed this mark where trucks now have 400 foot pounds of torque and 300 horsepower and 500, in the case of the hurricane uh, uh, high output engine, 500 horsepower and 500 foot pounds of torque. It, it, I don't need more torque. I, I told just fine. I need better fuel economy. So to me, let, let's not focus on the horsepower wars anymore. Let's give customers some savings at the bank so you're not paying a mile per gallon penalty to drive a full-size truck. Just make that happen. That's what I would like to see. And I, I'd love to see the Nissan Xterra come back. I, Nissan's been kind of wishy-washy the last couple of years. It'd be nice to have them have a, a vehicle they could really, like, we could look at and say, yeah, that's what that's what Nissan should be doing. So my two cents on that. What are you guys' two cents? Go ahead and put them down below. I'll just check out pickuptrucktalk.com. More articles coming out every day. We have big news uh, dropped this morning. Check out these videos over here. Uh -huh. As always, thanks for watching. I will see you down the road.